farms of Merton and Morden. Um, at the start of the last century, Merton and Morden was made up of open fields and farmlands. So just over a hundred years ago. Um, in fact, very little of it was actually covered by housing. And as someone wrote on a postcard to their family held in the Heritage Centre when visiting Rains Park, they said, it is wonderful being here in the countryside. Uh, many of the farms uh, and the lands can actually be traced really back to the 15th century. Uh, whilst green spaces still exist that once formed the farmlands, most are now covered by housing. Roads such as the A3 and Bushy Road by bypass and even railway stations. Uh, one can only imagine what it had been like living in the area at that time. Um, dissolution of the monasteries by Thomas Cromwell during Henry VIII's reign brought some changes to Merton and Malden. Farms up to that point had actually been leased from Merton Priory, and these were now owned by the Crown. Uh, some may well have been purchased by other landlords as well at that time, just to raise the funds for Henry. Now, this is a map from 1919 and actually shows Merton and Malden smack bang in the middle there, as you can get a real feel for how open it actually was. Um, now before 1907, Merton and Malden were considered rural areas and were part of Croydon Rural Council District. Um, in 1907, the parish of Merton was split away and the Merton Urban District was formed. Six years later, 1913, the parish of Malden also split from Croydon, we joined up with Merton Urban District to form Merton and Malden Urban District Council. It remained like this until the formation of the London Borough of Merton in 1965. The census of 1911 actually shows the population of Merton as 12,938 and Malden just as 1,202 people much smaller than in 19, 2011 when the population of London Borough and Merton was recorded at just under 200,000. I'm going to start looking at the farms now. And this is Baker's Farm. This farm was known as Baker's End as well, and also known as Broadwater Farm. Development of the farm started with the building of the roads known as the Apostles um, between 1890 and 1913, along with Approach Road, which provided a link between Kingston Road and Grand Drive. It went all the way up past Wimbledon Chase Station as well. It was quite a large farm, and um, where the co-op is at Wimbledon Chase was actually part of the farmland. The farm remained until it was demolished in 1920, and the council estate centred on Watley Avenue in the northwestern part of Martin Way was built. So it gives you a real idea of how large the farm was. And um, it became known as Broadwater Farm in 1901 and was being used as a dairy farm. In the late 1870s, the tenant was William Rain, the son of Edward Rain, who gave his name to Rain's Park. The next one is actually Blagden Farm. Um, the building actually shown in this picture is still there. Uh, the farm extended over the boundary line of Merton and Kingston. It's now covered by the Kingston Bypass A3, um, included Burlington Road with its side turnings, uh, the part of West Barnes Lane east of the level crossing, and Seafield Avenue just north of, of Mottsburg Park Station. So you get a real sense of how big some of these farms are. Blagden Farmhouse still stands along with its outbuildings, serving the Blagden Sports Ground, um, formerly a manual school playing fields. Um, Sacred Heart School, Merton and Burlington Road School, Kingston, are both on former Blagden Road lands. While housing was developed, much of the land has been used for industry. Famous names include Shannon, Decker, Senior Platts, uh, British Samson, Aero, engines and champion as well. Um, the farm was once used as a stud farm for shire horses. A blue house farm, this is a smaller farm, extended either side of West Barnes Lane from Grand Drive to Mossburg Park. It also included a small section between Byron Avenue and Beverly Brook. Uh, Charles Blake bought the farm in 1850 with the intention of developing the land 
Sprite, uh, Squire Blake, as he liked to be known, diverted West Barnes Lane to its current course. Despite this, the farm continued to operate and was used for breeding polo ponies until 1925. It was purchased by Sydney Parks for more, more modern homes and estates, who paid for the building of Motspur Park Station and developed the housing around the area between 1925 and 1927. The housing development was completed by Waits after 1936. Near to the bridge over Beverly Brook were four cottages known as the Blue House Cottages and two of those still survive today and they are shown here in this picture. The Cannon Hill, this is Cannon Hill Farmhouse, pictured in 1923 as it says. The farm covered the area of Cannon Hill Common and the field east of Rains Park Vow Football Club, uh, as well as Northway, Cherrywood Lane, the Green and Eastway. It also extended westways over the southern parts of Parkway and Elm Walk towards Grand Drive. George Blaine we acquired the Tan Cannon Hill Estate in 1925 and in 1929 started building the houses that now stand in that area. The field to the east of Rains Park Vale FC is known as Missian's Playing Fields. It was provided by a family who lost one of its members of Missian's Ridge near Yeeps during the 1914-18 war. It was a later required and, and is now known as Prince George's Playing Fields. The farmhouse itself that's in this picture was actually on the site now occupied by St John Fisher's Church in Cannon Hill Lane. And you might recognise this is Morden Park Library, so it's actually Morden Park Library is actually on the site of Graves Farm. Uh, this farm was located in Lower Morden Lane, nestling between two other farms, Peacock Farm and Lower Morden Farm. Part of the farm is now within the grounds of the Lower Morden uh, Garden Centre. Morden Park Library was on, built on the land occupied by the farm in 1946. Um, the library has since been demolished um, or, ch or changed and incorporated into a now a new block of flats, which is at 137 Lower Morden Lane. Back to the cemetery, you actually saw this on the map. This was actually on the early map. Uh, the farm overlapped with three districts, Merton, Morden and Morden. Um, the largest part of it, of 167 acres, was in Morden. In 1890, 125 acres were sold to Battersea Corporation for construction of the Battersea and Wandsworth Cemetery, now known as Morden Cemetery and North East Surrey Crematorium. Uh, the rest of the land remained as a farm until 1931, when following the death of St George, Sir Joseph Hood, the MP for Wimbledon, Merton and Morden, the Merton section of the farm was turned into the St Joseph Hood Memorial Playing Fields at Mosper Park. The wooden nature reserve was also part of the former farmlands, along with the open fields to the north of the end of London Borough and Merton section of Green Lane. The farm extended eastwards to Grand Drive and the housing at the corner of Lower Morden Lane and Grand Drive sits within the form of farmlands. The Hoppingwood Farm here, this farm was situated in the northwest corner of the parish of Merton. The larger part of the farm was in fact in New Morden. When the London to Southampton Railway opened in 1838, it cut the farm in two. New Morden Station, originally called Coombe with Morden, was opened in 1846. The farm existed until it was sold for development in 1911. Despite being sold for development, much of the land remained on as open ground. Today, the land on the New Morden side is occupied by the Morden Golf Course, Beverly Park and the Morden Wanderers Cricket Club. The area within Merton that was developed in 1925 was known as the Merton Abbey Meads, included Westcom Avenue, Coombe Gardens, and, and Camberley, Somerset, and Taunton Avenues. And we get on to our pigs here. This is one of the first pig farms, the Kendalls. Now, this is where, in fact, 
Malden Park Baptist Church now occupies this site. Uh, a pig farm, the farmhouse burnt down in 1937. The farm had for many years been known as Winterworths, a name that goes back to 1391, when, where a William Winterworth is listed in the Westminster Abbey accounts for Malden. This is Lodge Farm. Um, Henry Edward Wellstead is listed in 1913-14 Kelly's directory as being of Lodge Farm. Um, Lodge Farm was in fact in Central Road. Um, Wellstead may not have been a farmer. Um, the farm doesn't actually appear on the 1919 map used in this talk. Uh, but it was in existence in 1915 when an artist produced this painting of it. This, in fact, is a postcard replica of the, the thing. It's as that location in Central Road is unclear. I do know Rosemary Turner um, at Merton Historical Society has done quite a bit of research into this farm as well. This is Lower Morden Farm. Um, also simply known as the farm, it stood where Hatfield School is now located, extending north from Lower Morden Lane to Camborne Road. It was one of the biggest properties in Lower Morden. Um, the farm had an orchard and for many of the homes on the Tudor estate, um, they include apple or pear trees in their garden. Certainly we had an apple tree when we moved into our house in Plymouth Avenue. Now we get on to, to Malden Hall Farm. Uh, the farm was purchased by property developer John Innes during the 1860s and converted to dairy production in the 1890s. Highly successful, the farm was managed by Oscar J. White, a dairy farmer, and his family for more than 30 years. They had outlets in Wimbledon and Merton, the dairy carts, uh, one of which you can see in this picture here, in fact, more than one, uh, made local deliveries up to four times a day. The farmhouse was finally demolished in 1930 and the main farm site was, uh, was redeveloped. Uh, John Ennis owned at least three farms. His main focus was here at Malden Hall Farm. However, it wasn't cows he was mainly interested in, but pigs. They gave him the most pleasure, apparently. Now, this house still stands. This is at Malden Park. Um, a Morden Park farm. Farm was situated between the park bordering on to St. Lawrence Church. This white weatherboard cottage near to the church is all remains of the farm. Built in 1813, the cottage is still in use today. Also within the area of Morden Park was Martin's farm, which was 44 acres, uh, and Shode's farm, just east of Morden House, which was only seven acres. So there were some small farms as well. Now, this is the former BBC sports ground, uh, which sits on Motspur Farm. Uh, between 1623 and 1627, Merton College, Oxford, attempted to regain the manor of Malden, uh, of which the farm was part. Um, this is after the crown and obviously getting it back after the dissolution. Uh, they didn't succeed. Uh, Charles Blake acquired the farm in 1865, and he is responsible for building large houses in the Motspur Park Road area and rerouting some of, of West Barnes Lane, as I said earlier. The old BBC sports ground and the University of London athletic ground, which is on the other side of the road from this in West Barnes Lane, uh, both now are, are part of Fulham Football Grounds training complex, uh, which is on the form of farmlands. This is Peacock Farm. Uh, the farm is located where the Lower Morden Garden Centre now is. It's been expanded by adding John Manship's farm in the early 1800s, and it comprised of 156 acres. The Victorian house in the middle of the garden centre is a reminder of the farm. Now, this is part of Ravensbury Farm. Um, this farm was situated at the junction of Central Road in St. Helier Avenue and extended to Wandle Road, where the entrance of the farm was when the road was constructed. If you look at some of the maps, the road wasn't there. It was only later that the road was actually built. 
The farm was a number of one that formed part of the Ravensbury estate. The others had such names as Duckets, Still Hawes, and even Malden Farm. Most were lying in central roads. Um, the Grange was, until the 1820s, the farmhouse of Ravensbury Farm. The building, which was rebuilt in replica in 1980, can still be seen. Listed in the 1913-14 Kellys as being at Ravensbury Farm, Wandle Road is, is a Charles A. Skilton. It didn't list him as a farmer. John Albanart, who was better known as a calico printer, in the mid-1700s was using the farm mainly to grow madder for dyeing purposes. This is West Barnes Farm, or ha also known as Harriet's Farm. Uh, it's Mr. Harriet who is in fact in the picture here, which one he is, I should guess he was the older one. Uh, it may well be his son, who's, who's the younger one. The farm occupied an area from Rains Park Station to the Beverly Brook and south to Burlington Road. Also known as Harriet's Farm, following the purchase by William Harriet in 1894, he was still listed as a farmer in 1914. The farm had been first divided by the London to Southampton Railway when it opened in 1838. Rains Park Station was built in 1871. Part of Rains Park High School, Bushy First and Middle Schools occupy areas of the farm, former farmlands. Um, Carter tested seeds, had purchased 19 acres of the farm in 1901, and one would imagine that they employed local people. In 1967, this was replaced by the Carter's housing estate. Bradbury Wilkinson also bought farmland in 1921, which is now covered by Tesco's. Whilst Dixon's cottages still remained in Bar West Barnes Lane, little of the old farm is occupied by housing. This farm was one of two in West Barnes Lane that had been occupied by the Rain family. One was a hay and market farm and the other a stud and market farm. However, there is also reference to Edward Rain using West Barnes Farm for sheep farming. Now this is Rain's Park Golf Course. It's actually sat on West Barnes Park. Um, the farm sat either side of the Grand Drive from Bushy Road in the north to Cannon Hill Lane in the south. The land was brought by Richard Garth, Lord of the Manor of Morden, 1866. He planned to develop it for housing. As a result, in 1871, Garth paid for the building of Rains Park Station to serve his planned development. The late 1880s and the early 1900s saw the building of many properties, each with its own staff. As well as a number of mansions, it included more modest buildings such as uh, Randall Lodge, named after ja James Randall built it. Bonnie Comer and Baju Villas, which still exist today in Grand Drive. Fields were rented to Rains Park Golf Course uh, Golf Club until 1924, after which they were required by George Blay. By 1930, Blay had built most of the houses of the estate. Further houses by, were added by new ideal homesteads after World War II. And some of the other Merton farms that we had, and I want to finish off by mentioning these Merton farms, which unfortunately today I have found, I've found a very little on. The first is Beggar's Green Farm. Now this may in fact be Baker's End or, or Broadville Farm as well, as it's shown on a map. Um, I, I've seen being at roughly the same location. Two other farms are Merton Hall Farm, also known as Merton Holtz. Now this, was, this included Merton Hall Road uh, and was situated in Kingston Road opposite what was Nelson Hospital. From the map I've seen, it has a number of buildings. Yet I've not, I can't say that it was a very large farm. The last one is Manor Farm. Now this was situated where Rutledge School and, and John Issus Park are now allocated. The manor house um, that was here was one of the farm buildings. It may have also at one time been known as uh, Bowman's Farm. It's possible that the picture shown here was the manor house that was pre previously the farm, the farmhouse. Um, and that brings us to a conclusion and to the end, folks.